Hello and welcome back to Mushi Room, the game I'm working on in the Godot game engine. I've added a couple different things since I last made a video, so let's jump right in. One of the things that I think will be important for Mushi Room is to make sure that the player has things to do. This isn't really meant to be a game where you're just watching and sitting around idly. So I want the player to have things that they can interact with and sort of chores that they have to do. In the last video, I showed how the player will have to do some gardening. The next player activity I've been working on is woodcutting. So I implemented an axe tool that will be able to be picked up and used much like the watering can. And I created a log object that the player can cut down and get some firewood from. The next step was to get some logs to spawn randomly around the area. When I was testing if this was working or not though, I did get some pretty funny results. So that was pretty fun. Luckily, Godot's tile map system made it pretty easy to identify which tiles should be able to spawn logs. And then I just had to do a simple collision check to make sure that they don't spawn on top of other items. The other bit of good news here is that I created an item spawner to spawn the logs and I can use it to spawn any type of item really. So if I want to implement another item that spawns randomly in the future, it should be pretty easy to do. So now you can use the axe to cut down the randomly spawned logs and get some firewood. In the last video, I talked a little bit about how one of the struggles I've had with this game is wanting to do without an inventory system. So I had to come up with a different solution for how the player might store the firewood. At first, I thought I might just let the player pick it up and move it around and just place it wherever they want. But then I thought that if it were me, I'd probably be annoyed by that. And I really like having my objects kind of organized when I play a game. So I came up with the idea of containers that don't work like an inventory system. The first container I made was this firewood bin, and you can place it down like any other type of furniture. And when you click on it while having a firewood in your hand, you can add that firewood to the bin. Likewise, when your hand is empty, you can pick up a firewood from the bin. I also made it so that the bin actually changes with the more firewood you add. So you've got a visual representation of how much you've actually got stored there. And when it looks full, it is full and you need another bin. I don't think this kind of system would work in a game where you need dozens or hundreds of particular materials. But I think in Mushy Room where you won't be dealing with such large quantities of materials and it's kind of casual and relaxed, I think this is a pretty cool solution, but let me know what you think in the comments. I also added a crop sack where you can store crops, like the carrots and potatoes from the previous video, and it works the same way as the firewood bin. One key thing to note though is that you can't mix veggies. So each sack can only hold one type of vegetable. One of the things I like about this solution is that I really like the aesthetic of it. It makes the whole environment feel a little bit more cozy, like you're storing up and getting ready for the winter or something like that. But let's talk some more about the firewood now. So firewood is going to be a resource that you need for a couple different things. Now I've made it so that when you put down a fireplace, it's not lit. And in order to be lit, it needs to have firewood. After some time, it'll also run out of firewood and you'll have to replenish it. So Mushi will only be able to warm himself up when there's firewood in the fireplace. The other current use for firewood is for cooking. So I did a quick showcase of cooking in one of the video shorts that I made, but basically you'll be able to take these crops and put them in the cook pot and you'll be able to cook them up to make food for Mushi. But in addition to three crops, you'll also need some firewood. And you'll need one piece of firewood for every meal you cook basically. As the meal cooks, it changes color and you need to have a bowl ready to take out the meal before it burns. And then you can take the bowl and feed it to Mushi. And of course, the firewood and the crops you used to make the meal get used up in the process. And that just about wraps up all the changes so far. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think of the new systems and any feedback you might have. As always, I love listening to everybody's comments. An extra special thanks to my Patreons. I really appreciate your support. If you'd like to support me, make sure you check out my Patreon or my coffee page. All the links are down in the description. And I hope you're enjoying getting these insights into Mushi Room and how it's coming along. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to see more Mushi Room content. And as always, thank you so much for watching.